praise, you're holy and you're worthy, give you praise, you're high and you're lifted up, you're high and lifted up, you're high and lifted up, and you're worthy of praise. Glory to God, yes? Yes. You feel excited tonight? Yes. You got a high expectation? Yes. Okay. The last, uh, the last class that we did, the last service that we had was part one of the War of the Worlds, the War of the Worlds teaching and what this is. Tonight we're going to be going into part two, and I think we'll probably have, uh, I would say probably going to be three or four parts that we will be looking kind of at the same kind of same kind of idea but with different stories and different ways of coming in and out so we can see it from different angles and what we're what we're basically um, doing this is a this is a high level <clears throat> about as high as you can go remnant teaching to the remnant warrior so um, you know, if uh, for those people out there on YouTube, uh, you know, to be honest with you, if you're uh, if you're a mainstream, happy, clappy, churchianity person, well, unfortunately, you probably just won't get this, and uh, you might even have problems with it, or. Uh, if there are people who are watching and you are still not delivered from these um, sarcastic and judging and critical spirits, well, those kind of spirits are just going to go crazy on a talk like this because it's going to go up on a high level. And if that's the case, uh, praise the Lord, there's many other g good shows you could go and watch on YouTube. So uh, if this is, if this is uh, not for you, maybe you can uh, just switch over to some of our more simple teachings because it's just, uh, this is aimed for people who, who uh, aren't asking, can a Christian have a demon and arguing and are curses real? This is, this is not that kind of thing. That's, that's just way down here. You know, this is, we're, we're going to be talking about tonight is just like way, way up. And uh, we're teaching this to the dedicated, the dedicated ones, the ones who can find the scriptures, know where the scriptures are in the Bible. They've already got a lot of deliverance themselves. They're, um, they're already working in the deliverance field, in the healing deliverance evangelical field, probably already out working the streets and working the provinces. And they are active doers. They are not only knowers, but they are doers. Those are the kind of people that we're talking about, people who have no doubt whatsoever that the spiritual world is completely real and people who know their authority in Christ Jesus. Yes? So that's primarily what this is um, what this is about tonight and uh, you know um, if, you're, if you're tuning in for the first time on YouTube I would strongly suggest uh, that you go back and you watch part one because we can't go back and explain all that stuff. It's going to be too long and too complicated with a talk like this. We'll touch on some of the things that we talked about in our last meeting, but we just can't go over it uh, all again, yes? <clears throat> Amen. So, um, so tonight I want to I, I talk about releasing unlawful prisoners. Releasing unlawful prisoners. Uh, like, what would I mean by that? Well, you can get yourself to a place where uh, you don't really have to renounce anything anymore. You've already broken all your curses, pretty much, and I think everybody here pretty much has. I mean, God might remind you of something once in a while. Really, you know, still, still we go through some curse-breaking renunciation list. We make our own list. And you're looking up there and you might go, man, I've like renounced that like 20 times before. And 
and we're going to do it, you know, and we build it, and there, there it is again. It's not, uh, you know, as long as you haven't gone back and done those kind of curses again, um, it's not that you have to break the curse again. I mean, once Jesus forgives you, you're forgiven. It can't come back unless you do it again. Okay, so, uh, but, but I'll tell you just from what some wisdom is and from my experience is, the thing about deliverance that I would say is the hardest part about deliverance is getting the enemy steered up so that you can get it up and deal with it and cast it out because a lot of these kind of spirits and things, they're pretty good at hiding and you almost have to agitate it, you know. I, I always refer to this as poking the bee's nest. You know, you poke it and poke it and poke it until the bees start to come out to defend the hive. You know, if you, uh, if you want the honey, right? God said, I'll take you to land of milk and honey. And if you want the honey, you have to get rid of the bees. So we, we poke that and poke that until we see, are there still any bees there? Yes or no? And eventually, so uh, you'll usually find out. By the fruit, you will know it. So, um, so a lot of times we just renounce things, even though we've done it before, just because, like, for if, there, if you have a demonic spirit, an unclean spirit in, inside of you, uh, he gets provoked. He gets provoked normally, uh, well, in a few ways. One is anything to do with God, like real gospel. You know, like Jesus walking into the church, uh, Jesus is walking in the church and um, in Mark 19 and he starts, it's a well-established church and these people have been there forever and Jesus starts teaching the real gospel and the demons come up. And they start yelling, we know who you are, you're the son of God, did you come to destroy us? See, he stirred it up by the real gospel and demons don't get stirred up by religion because demons are religion. See, that is of Satan. Religion is from Satan. The word of God is from God. <laughs> so, uh, so that's one way, you know, singing, singing and praising God, reading the Bible, uh, speaking in tongues. Often you start yawning when you start speaking in tongues, you know, because you're staring it up, this kind of thing. Um, Real preaching, real ministry, being around real ministry things. Even if you're around, around people over here, they're doing deliverance and you're just kind of around, it can stir up the stuff in you. Okay? So that's, uh, so that's, that's one way. And, uh, and the other way is uh, going after what that spirit's particular stronghold is. You see, like, uh, <clears throat> you might... Yeah, you might be teaching about, uh, you know, breaking the curses of pornography or something like that. And then, then you're talking about that and you're steering all this stuff up. But over here, you still have these demons of uh, depression or, or anger or alcohol or, you know, like whatever it might be. Well, you're not pressing their buttons because you're only talking about this particular subject, you see. I mean, if I, like right, right now I'm talking and, you know, it seems... Uh, <clears throat> You know, everybody's sitting here like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then, but then if I, if I were to come over to you, if I were to come over to you and say, uh, so tell me about your father. What's going on with your father? Can you feel? See, you feel. Can you tell me about your mother? What's going on with your mother anyways? Can you feel? See, see, see what you're feeling, what you're feeling. Ooh, there's the anointing. See, what you're feeling right now is, is the areas that, have, that are still being protected by the enemy because it has not yet been completely dealt with. It would be the same if I walked over to a boy and I, and I said, so did you get rid of your pornography? And I'm just like, and I'm looking in the eye, you see? If that spirit is there, that spirit going to react. Okay, so this is... This is understanding kind of the dynamics of deliverance and how we work. And this is why a lot of people think that deliverance people, uh, you know, people that do deliverance, you know, like me, that, that were just way too intense. And then they, they see that as you're not acting like a pastor, so you must not have love or you must be angry or you must be that. But, you know, to stir up these spiritual things, it's, it takes intense work. And you have to, you have to also understand 
how to, how to poke the nest to see if you're going to get a reaction to something and you have to know what you're looking for. You have to start, you know, by deliverance after a while, you can see when spirits come up in people's eyes. You see the, the pupils dilate and you see one eye kind of go down a little lower like this and you see this kind of like thing like this. And, and, the, and the pupils, if you watch the pupils, they actually dilate when the spirit comes up. And you, you can start to recognize little face twitches. And then it's usually like this. A little hunched like this. See? You start to react. Where even, even if, if you're just looking out in a church service and you're seeing like a hundred people, you, your eye will just go ch -ch -ch, and you can see the spirits that are reacting in a, in a church service. So these are, the, these are the kind of things that are advanced and you know, that we're talking about, these, kind, these kinds of things. And, and if you are part of the remnant and you've been around for a while, you're going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you're not and you're, you know, you know, churchianity thumbsucker and you, can't, you haven't even got to the place of believing in deliverance, you're going to be like, what? See? So, um, but anyways, let's, let's go into this. The point is that... Um, you can be an unlawful prisoner. You remember in, uh, in Mark 5 and Luke 8, Jesus came up to a man and, and uh, he, said, he asked the demon, what is your name? Because, it says, because Jesus had commanded it to come out, but it didn't come out. So Jesus goes in more intensely and starts to ask information that can help with the deliverance, like what kind of spirit am I dealing with? What kind of, who's the strong man that's responsible? That's not, that wouldn't be classified as talking to demons. That would be classified as interrogating, as interrogating. And demons are, demons are liars, of course, but uh, there are certain things that uh, God will make them say to you if it's pertinent to the deliverance. We don't, you know, we have no aspir aspirations about wanting to talk to a demon, but sometimes, you know, Jesus, you see Jesus pressing in a little bit more. Why? Because at that point, the man was an unlawful prisoner. You see, if you have a curse in your life, if you have a curse in your life through ongoing sin, you are a lawful prisoner. The demon has a right to be there. Do you see? You see? You know, there's a, there's a video uh, on our website where I'm casting a demon... Uh, out, of a, out of a woman, her father was involved in, um, in the Masons and she'd been involved with horoscopes and a, demon, and a demon comes up, she had kidney failure and the demon comes up and he goes, her kidneys are mine, I'm in control, they belong to me. Well at that point, if it had been 10 minutes earlier, he would have been correct. She would have been a lawful prisoner. But five minutes ago, I just had her renounce those things. She just broke those curses in Jesus' name. Now, once you break the curses in Jesus' name, you now become a unlawful prisoner. Means that the demon does not have a right to be there, but nevertheless, uh, in, in his way of thinking, I'm not still coming out. I'm still not coming out. I don't have a right to be here, but I'm not coming out. And, and it's at this point we have to use, we have to use a, a biblical ministry, uh, which is known as deliverance, to forcefully evict these things. You got it? <clears throat> okay, so we're going to have to look at cause and effect. Cause and effect. Remember God said uh, in Galatians 3, don't be deceived, what you sow you will reap. Cause and effect, right? There's good works and bad works. Good works and bad and bad works, you see? And uh, you can reap good stuff or you can reap bad stuff according to whether or not you're doing good stuff or, or bad stuff, right? We all got that. All right, go over to first, go over to first Kings 7, 48 and 51. I'm going to kind of go along... Fast, but not too fast, because this is a this is um, 
advanced stuff, okay? And I want you to get in. Please be looking at the scripture, not just at the preacher. 1 Kings 7, because if you look at the scripture, it's going to be even more positively uh, recorded. And, um, you know, I would also encourage you, uh, you know, if you're getting distracted by taking notes, rather than taking notes, why don't you just take the notes off the board later and just focus on the scripture? This will help you a lot and it'll also help you with the understanding of it. Yes? Okay, so go over to 1 Kings 7, verse... 1 Kings 7, verse 48. <coughs> Solomon finished building the church and he made all of the church vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord. The altar of gold, the table of gold, whereupon the show bread was. Look at verse 51. So was ended all the work of building the new church that King Solomon made for the house of God. And Solomon brought in all the things that the church needed to operate and the things that his father had dedicated to be given to the new church, even all of the silver and all of the gold, all of the vessels he put amongst the treasures of the house of the Lord. Okay, so, I mean, if you look around, if you look around the church here, you know, what do you see? You see a guitar over there. You see some amplifiers and speakers. You see some microphones. You see, uh, you know, a drawing board. You see the preachers wearing a microphone. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. We have many things here that we need to run the church. Okay? So, at the end of building the church, that's when we brought in these things. Because now we were ready to start having services. Right? Okay, now I'm going to, this thing, this thing that I'm talking about tonight in the War of the Worlds, part two, I'm going to, this principle that I'm going to be teaching tonight, in the fact that it's a godly and biblical principle, you can take it all the way back to Adam and Eve, or you could put it all the way to the book of Revelations. Because uh, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever, and I am a God that does not change. So, Part of this teaching that we're doing is to understand how God thinks, how God reacts, and the way he does things when he wants to do it. Yes? Because uh, you, you can keep yourself from a lot of trouble by knowing these kinds of things. So Solomon did everything in the church. The church was good, and all the things put in the church was good. It is good. And ready, yes? In Genesis 1, 26 through 28, it says that God, after God created uh, Adam and Eve and all the things, it says that he, he paused and he looked around and he saw everything was in place and he said, it is good. It is good, right? I mean, Adam and Eve are living in a perfect place. It says they live in a land of gold gold and silver. They live in a land that is full of precious gemstones. It's in the Bible. So, I mean, they didn't, you know, the thing is they didn't need money, but if you like to have pretty things, they had it all. Then on top of that, they had all the food that they could eat. They didn't have to hunt. They didn't have to pull any weeds. See? It was all right there. There was animals. There was animals around, but they didn't have to worry because the animals would not attack you. The animals don't want to eat you or hurt you. Okay? It is good. Then, as far as they go, there's no curses. There's no demons. There's no sicknesses. There's no diseases. There's no troubles. There's no problems. I mean, it's really, it's really like, you know, the Bible says... Uh, you know, in, uh, in Revelations 2, it says, and then there will be no more curse. There comes a point uh, in Revelations that it says, uh, Revelations 22, and then there will be no more curse. 
See, it talks about the time where we're going to go to heaven where there are no more tears. There is no more sadness. There is no, see, no more depression. There is no more, see? And really, when we're looking forward to heaven like that, we're really looking back at the garden the way it was before it got all messed up. It is good. It is good. See? See how it goes? Go to 1 Kings, uh, 1 Kings uh, 9, 1 through 9. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished building the house of God and the king's house, his own house, and all Solomon's desire, which he had pleased to do, he had everything, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time personally, as he appeared, as he had appeared unto him in Gibeon. And the Lord said to Solomon, I have heard your prayers, I have heard your requests, that you have made known to me. And I have made this church a holy house, which you have built, to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually, always. And if... Now, here's five conditions. Here's the five conditions if you want to keep God in your life. I don't mean that he, you know, you're completely lost, but I mean the power of God, the anointing of God, the presence of God. Here's, here's the list. Here's a five-fold list that God said were conditions. If you will walk before me, as your father walked, in integrity of heart, have to be an honest person, in uprightness, no sneaking around, to do according to what I command you, you must, you must have a ministry, you must be led by God, and you must keep the commandments. Yeah, and you must keep my statutes and my judgments. See, you have to know the ways of God. That's what we're going to be looking at tonight. You have to know the ways of God, and you have to have a ministry. You know, we just... We just discussed this. There's a whole talk about this in the, in the talk we did last uh, Wednesday night, uh, the spirit of wickedness, about the requirements that you need to be doing if you want the presence of God and the blessings of God. And if anybody has a question, you can go back and see the beginning of that, of that talk. Then I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon... Uh, Israel, the city of God, as I promised to David your father, saying, There will not fail a person in your family line that will not be on the throne. But if, but if, now this is what we were talking about the other night how to know a real prophet from a false prophet. Because a real prophet is going to talk like God. See, because it's coming from God. Okay, so God's, so God's first going to go, uh, uh, you, you over there in the green shirt, uh, you over there in the blue shirt. Uh, you know, what I'm seeing right now is God has a wonderful promise for you, and he's saying he knows you've been going through a hard time, and uh, he sees he's called you into the ministry, and you know that also, and the person is going, yeah, 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 because they're getting confirmation. Uh, and the Lord really is going to lift you up. The Lord says within a year from now, he's going to lift you up and you're just going to be amazed at, at this whole thing that's going to start growing in your ministry. But the Lord is saying right now that there's a problem that you need to deal with. Okay? Now, if it's uh, one of those freaky, embarrassing kind of things, they're going to tell you on the side. If it's not so much and it's a common thing, they're going to go, you know. But, but the problem is you're, you're living with that girl and, that, and the Lord is telling you that that has to stop. You've got to get delivered of that. You've got to get that demon out of there. You've got to tell the girl, look, either we're going to get married or, you know, or you, you, know you, you have some wrong kind of uh, magazines at your house, some wrong things on your computer, and the Lord says, you know what he's talking about. And you're like... And he's going, and you need to get rid of that or that's going to hold your, stop your progress. See, you can tell a real prophet because he's going to give a word of edification and then a word of correction 
of the thing that Satan is trying to do to get yourself to block it, to block it yourself. Do you see? And this is what God is, this is what God is, this, this is the way that God thinks and the way that he talks. Look, he just said, if you do this, 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 I'm going to bless you and your whole family is going to be blessed. But look at verse 6. But if you shall start to backslide away from me, you or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I set before you, but you go and start to get involved with false gods to worship them, then I will, I will cut you out of all these promises. I will cut you out of this church, even the church where I live. Will I cast you and the church out of my sight. I will cast you and the church out of my sight. Can you see that God can even get delivered of a church? Huh? God can get delivered of you and your church. Do you see that? The reality of that? Look, I will, I will, which I have hollowed in my name, this house, and will cast out of my sight, and Israel shall only be a whole historical lesson. And everybody will be going, oh, did you hear? Did you hear? And, and at this house, which is high right now, it will be brought down low until everyone who walks by it will be amazed. And they will go, the demons will be mocking the serpents will be hissing and they will say why did the Lord do this to the church and his people and they will answer because they backslid and turned away from God their God and they took hold of other gods and they began to worship them and serve them therefore the Lord brought evil upon the church and the people who are now the most blessed of them all. So you see, you can have divine visitation from God. You could be in your bedroom praying and Jesus walks right in and just starts to talk to you. You can be like, uh, like Judas and he goes, Lord, is it me? And he goes, mm-hmm. And you don't get delivered and he warns you. You can be like Peter and say, I'll never deny you. And Jesus says, yes, you will three times. He goes, no, I won't. See, having a personal face-to-face -face visitation with Jesus as much as you would, would be thinking, well, that's if I could get that, all my troubles, all my problems would be solved, is not historically, is not, uh, historically correct. There were some other couple guys named Nadab and Abihu uh, that came out. They were sons of the Levites, and they, they came out waving strange fire before the Lord that they had taken upon themselves, and the earth... The earth swallowed up, the earth opened up and swallowed them and everything they had, their houses, their families and them went down into hell. And yet, and yet they had met the Lord face to face. So you see, it's, it's, it's not a matter of how much close you can get to God or how close you can get uh, to Jesus with an experience. It's about how close you can stay with God. Not get to God but the point is staying, abiding in the shadow of the Most High, abiding in the cleft of the rock. You see, staying, persevering, not backsliding. See, that's what it is. And he says, even though you, you might be like Solomon, he's saying to Solomon, the smartest guy, the richest guy, one of the best looking guys, he has everything in the world. There's nothing that he could want that he couldn't have, and yet, and on top of that, God has moved into his church. I mean, what, what better situation could you have? But still God is saying, but there's conditions. You can, you can mess this up. You can completely destroy all this. You can completely destroy this whole presence, this whole great thing that you have right now. You can be a remnant warrior right now. And in a couple of years, you'd be sitting home drinking, drinking a beer and having a smoke and playing with your TV changer with your live-in boyfriend. And of course, everybody goes, oh, that would never happen to me. But, you know, for a lot of people, it's just a matter of Satan sending a good-looking doggy boy with a plan to 
get you pregnant and get you in a situation like that or some beautiful doggy girl and you off you go and down you go or some money be tempted with some money thing or something you know the typical temptation kind of things that there is and this is why the more deliverance that we get the better off we're we're going to be and we discussed that on the last talk how how david david knew how to cast out demons but he didn't get it cast out of him and because of that he passed down these curses in the family line and solomon has everything right now but the other thing that he does have is all the curses from daddy right and we already know what david what david got got in involved involved with now in genesis 2 16 and 17 god also said the same kind of words to adam he said you you have everything but let me warn you of that thing over there don't touch that because if you touch that your whole ministry all the blessings will die you see so it's the same it's the same kind of theory that's going uh going all going all all along you can see some of the warnings that god gives you in deuteronomy for instance in deuteronomy 28 1 through 15 uh 1 through 14 god is saying if you will keep his commandments and walk with god and serve god in joy you'll be blessed in the city blessed in the fields blessed going in blessed coming out that's the same exact words in leviticus 26 in the beginning and then you get to these verses like Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 that says just like this but if but if you don't then all these curses can come on you do you see so there's that's the way that God always speaks God oh God never threatened God never threatens you Satan threatens God never threatens you if you if you're hearing a threat against you it has to be a demon god will never threaten you god if you start going if you start heading the wrong way god will ask you questions are you sure you want to are you sure this is a good idea see uh god will ask you things like that to get you to judge yourself and analyze your own situation like he did with with uh, with cain i wouldn't do that if i was you S satan standing at the door waiting to get in if you do that you see god and first he asked cain why are you so upset why are you so angry if you do well you'll be you'll be the leader see but then but then god says but if you still do it then satan's at the door and he's coming in you see this is the way god always talks he always first comes and he tells you about the blessing you can have if you just do do it the right way and then after he's done with that he gives the warning that you won't that it won't happen you see so this is just a reoccurring theme always in trying to understand god's way of thinking and um you know it's us who it's us who makes makes the decision so um you know our our job is to try and just stay clean walking in a very unclean demonic world in first thessalonians 5 23 and even second corinthians 7 verse 1 paul says i pray i pray that in the time of judgment that your whole body soul and spirit will be blameless before the lord see the bible says keep yourself unspotted from the things of the world be involved with ministry helping those who are afflicted you see being involved with ministry can really help you out with a lot of different kinds of things look at first kings 3 verse 1 solomon solomon fell in love uh, solomon made a deal with the pharaoh king of egypt now who's that that's the most that's the most demonic guy on earth i mean that guy that guy uses magic and divination and conjuration and you remember uh all the wise men when when moses came in he said call the wise men and they called in the diviners and the magicians and all this stuff like the wise men that came to jesus you know this whole christmas thing they were all demonic guys that made the money uh by by demonic practices and and the pharaoh the pharaoh was certainly was the most demonic house 
uh, of them all. And, and Solomon fell in love with the Pharaoh's daughter, and he brought her to the city of God. There's the first slip. There's the first slip. He went for doggy girl. Do you see? Everything was going good. And he goes over there to Egypt to try and probably talk about war or making some kind of peace deal or something like that. And he looks over there and there's a beautiful doggy girl who's, who grew up in the most demonic household. So, of course, she's full of demons. <laughs> and, you know, like Samson, he goes, get her for me. Get me that one. You know, and which in Samson's case, it started a war. Yes? You remember, you remember the story. So the first, the first problem that he does, and even if we're not talking about doggy girl here, you, the first problem is, this is the, this is the thing, you start, to, you start to bring demonic things back into your house, into the church, into your walk with God, into your camp. You start to mix a little, start to mix just a little, of demonic stuff, wrong things, darkness with light, and the Bible tells us what agreement, what agreement does uh, Belial have with the temple of God? None. You can't sit at the table of God and drink from the cup of devils. You see? And he, and he throws this out here because I can tell you what Satan would tell him. What Satan told him, and we're even going to see this, he told him, he told him, well, look, uh, technically you cannot bring, you cannot bring a non-Jew into the temple of God. You could not. It was called pollution, bringing pollution in. So, so Satan would, Satan would tell, Satan told him essentially that, well, that's not a problem because she don't like my God anyways. So, so I'll just bring, I'll just bring her back and I will build her her own house. And she can live, you know, here's, the, here's where I live next to the temple of God, and her house is here. And I'll just tell her, look, uh, you know, uh, you can't ever walk into the church, okay? And you can't ever come in my house either, okay? And of course Satan's going to go, yeah, I promise. But... Uh, <laughs> This is, this is the first step, you know, you're just bringing it, you're just bringing it too close, too close. Look at 7, and seven verse 8. And his house where he lived had another court within the porch, which was like, which was the same kind of work. And Solomon made a house for the Pharaoh's daughter, who he had taken as his wife. And he made her... He made her her own place, her own house. And again, the illusion is, this is not going to get in the way of my ministry because I'm going to keep it separate. And this is what a lot of people do today, even to more extremes. They have a church life and they have a world life. They come to church and they look pretty. Jesus said, you know, they clean the outside of the cup and it looks beautiful, but inside's full of dead men's bones and pollution and Jesus said first clean the inside that then the outside will be truly clean you see so you know this is why a lot of people can't get delivered they can come into a super anointed place and come in some of these services where the Holy Spirit is just like blast a roo man I mean we have some services here where everybody just goes down on the ground the power of God just comes in so strong but then you but then you look at you look at some people that are there and they're just almost, they're just pretty much getting nothing. Maybe they do a couple little small little yawns or something like that. And you don't have to know what they're doing. You just know they're doing something wrong. You just know it. Something is out of order. And at the same time, Satan will be telling them as they're sitting out there, see, I told you I didn't have a demon. All these other people do, but not me. Because deliverance is dependent upon our relationship with God. You see? And this is hard for a lot of people to understand. Look at 9 verse 20, 9 verse 24. 
But the Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David onto her house, which Solomon had built her. And Solomon kept building other things. So she's not just staying in one place now. She's starting to move around a little bit. You see? Things are starting to get steered up, uh, you know, just a little bit. And the same thing happened in Genesis 3, 1 through 6, where everything was going okay, and then the snake shows up. The snake shows up, and, and they, began, they began listening, and the thing that the snake was saying was, uh, well, this will help you, and it will improve your life. You'll be like God instead of having to answer to God. And he starts making these false promises that, yes, God said don't do it, but this is a special situation, and if I do it, my life will be better. He will tell every thief the same words. He'll tell every wife, wife cheater the same exact words. You know, oh, you're so unhappy, but if you just go have, you know, have your little fun thing with your uh, cheating girlfriend, you'll be happy now. But then they get pulled into Satan's trap, and now it's even worse. And eventually they always get caught. Always get caught. Just like thieves. Thieves always get caught. Sooner or later they drop their wallet or somebody sees something. They just get set up. Satan, Satan pulls them into it, then Satan turns them in. Destroys their life. He's the destroyer. You see, you can't, you can't get away... You can't get away with things for very long, especially if you're in the ministry. You know, the Bible says there'll be nothing spoken or performed in darkness that won't be revealed in the light. So eventually, you know, if you're thinking about trying to get away with something, you have to tell yourself, I'll never be able to get away with that. The only way I can maybe get away with that is if I just tell Jesus, take a hike and I walk away, then I can live in the shadows. But if you're... But if you're trying to walk around with Jesus, Jesus is going to go, well, we have a deal, man, that you're going to, you're going to stay clean and get clean. And if you're not going to do that, I'm going to make you get exposed. I'm going to humble you through a fiery trial. Right? He resists the proud, but he lifts up the humble. Right? You can't, you can't get away from those kinds of tests if you're walking with Jesus. Right? Second Chronicles 8. Second Chronicles... 8 verse 11. Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David onto the house that he built for her. For he said, my wife will not live. My wife will not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, because that's holy. So instead, I'll give her her own place. The excuse. There's the first excuse. There's the first excuse where Satan's coming in very sneaky and you don't even think that you're going into the trap because you're not thinking. You're looking at your eyes instead of thinking with your, with, with your mind. Yes? You become an excuse maker. In Genesis 3, 12 through 13, uh, God asks Adam, why did you do this? And he said, well, it's not my fault, it's the woman's fault. And then he goes to the woman, he goes, why'd you do this? She said, it's not my fault, it's the snake's fault. They begin to start making excuses so that no one is accountable. And this is the road that Solomon uh, is heading down. And this is where so much of the world is right now. They're blame shifters. They can't be accountable. No one can say, I'm sorry or take responsibility for all their own actions. And even they'll lie to save face. And these are demonic spirits. 1 Kings 3, 2 through 3. 1 Kings 3, 2 through 3. Okay, now, he made, the first, he made the first mistake, which was bringing back a woman that was full of demons back to the city of God. Now, here's, now here we go with number 2. Also, the people were still sacrificing in the high places because they were saying, well, the church isn't open yet. The church isn't open yet, and yet they could have been, uh, they could have been uh, doing all their God stuff at home. But instead, they're going up into demon land. And they're not taking back demon land, right? I'm going up to the high place, gonna take the devil down. You would have to go up there 
ask forgiveness, renounce the curses, break the curses, command the demons to go before you could go up there and try and do godly things. But they're not doing that. They're just, go, they're just going up there. And if you, if you pay attention to the Old Testament, wherever you see kings and leaders that started out well but fell in the end, you'll always notice one thing in the beginning of the story. It'll say, ah, they started to do well and started to do the things of God, how be it the high places were not removed. You, if you pay attention, you'll see that that was the one trap that in the end, now what's that saying to us? That's saying because our high places would be our generation curses, where our family went and used to go and sin, and now that you have these demonic attachments, these wrong things, see, because we're going from physical to spiritual in a story like this. See, it's a parable, physical compared to, to spiritual, and so our high places affecting us would be like this. Um, uh, Joe started out very well. He had some visitations from, from God. He had some clear words from God. God really anointed him. He started to go out and God started to use him and people started to get healed. And he began casting out demons and the demons were coming out and his ministry started to grow. But then, but then what happened was, and then you'll hear the story. And what the story, what the story will be, how they went down, pretty much is all the testimonies that all the happy clappy pa pastors give you. I used to be a homosexual, and I used to be a drug addict, and I used to be a... Uh, an alcoholic, and I used to run around with all the girls, a different girl every night. <laughs> and then I saw the glorious light, and I had my road to Damascus experience, and God came, and God just set me free. And you're going, really? You got delivered? No, God set me free. God delivered me of all of this. Well, you could go to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting and you could hear the same thing. You could go to a drug, drug anon meeting or a sex addict meeting and they're coming to the meetings and they're going, hi, I'm Joe, I'm an alcoholic. Oh, you're still drinking? Uh, no, but you know, it's always going to be here with me, but I have a three-year chip. I went three years without drinking. Oh, hallelujah, You're, you must be free indeed by now on three years. Some people get their 10-year chip. Okay, but the demons, are still, the demons are still sitting in there. They're sitting in the high places. The demons are still sitting in there, and you go, no. See, if you don't understand deliverance, this is what you're going to do. No, that's not true. I don't have a demon. If I had a demon, I'd still be a homosexual. I'd still be drinking. I'd still be getting drunk. I'd still... See, they'll argue like that because they're not doing it now. I've had people come up to me in a prayer line, and, they, and I go, what do, you, what do you need prayer for? And they go, uh, well, I got some pain in my back, and I hear the Holy Spirit say asthma. And I, say, and I say to the people, well, what I just heard the Lord say is you need to renounce asthma. And they go, I don't have asthma. And I go, well, I don't know why, but I, you know, I mean, I, I heard it clearly. I don't know what it means. Maybe you're going to get asthma. Maybe there's some curse in your family. I don't know, but, but the Lord told me asthma, so we need to renounce that before we go after the back thing, because that's what God said. Because that's what I heard. And they'll want to argue, almost even want to rebuke me. And then, and then finally I'm going, well, yeah, does asthma mean anything? And they go, well, yes, I, I had asthma up till I was eight years old, but God set me free. But God set me free, like the one with the kidney thing. She had been a Bible teacher, uh, you know, at 12 years old she was doing the occult with people down the street. Then she became a Christian. She had been a Christian for 60 years. And now she was a Bible teacher in a 2,000-member church. But she had all these crazy sicknesses and diseases. And she came to me and she said, I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, I know you do deal with curses and stuff, but I can't have nothing like that because I'm a Christian. 
I said, well, maybe it's demonic, maybe. And she goes, oh, I can't be demonic. I'm a Christian. I'm a Bible teacher. I go, I go to, I, my sins are forgiven. I'm forgiven. You know, same thing like that. Happy Clappy always says this kind of thing. And then you go, well, look, just renounce. How about if just, you got nothing to lose, just say, I ask forgiveness. And as soon as they ask forgiveness, out comes the demon. See? And with the lady, the person with the asthma, I said, well, look, why don't you just renounce it? You say you got delivered and healed of it. She goes, well, yes, I did. I don't have no asthma. I haven't had asthma since I was eight years old. Now you're talking about somebody who's like, like uh, 40 years old right now. So in your mind, you go, well, it'd be impossible. You couldn't have asthma and have no indication of it. See, this is a misunderstanding of demonic, how demonic things work. Because most of the demonic things that came in by the high places, they are intentionally told by Satan or the rulers, don't work. Don't ever show yourself. So you have, all these, you have all these demonic things that are in your life and you don't even know it. You know some main ones. You know some main keys. Maybe you know you have a, an anger problem or a sex problem or a, a whatever. You know you have that. And so that's what you're, that's what you're seeking deliverance of. Because you know you have that problem. I know I have those demons and I need to get free from that. But God's going, man, if you only knew how many Philistines there was there. See, if you only knew, but you don't know. And, you're, and most people never will know. You'll never know how many demons are actually there. And this, again, this is an advanced teaching. It's going to be very hard for people who don't understand deliverance to understand what I'm saying right now. It, they, they, they almost can't believe it. But, you know, I've been doing this 28 years, and you all have been around for a while. Let me, let me ask you this. Have you started to find out that you had a lot more things than you thought you had? Yes. What? Yes. What? Yes. It's kind of a shockaroo, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but, and you know, uh, you know what, what they're doing there is they're just hiding. Uh, there's just enough bothering you to bother you. There's just enough attacking you to make you uncomfortable and to frustrate and discourage you, but not enough to just fully try and kill you or destroy you. And that's just, that's Satan's insurance policy. They're in there hiding just in case you ever decide to serve God. And I don't mean happy clappy, because you're not really going to see that then either. But I'm talking about if you ever start to go, well, I'm going to start, I'm going to start going to try and get the sick healed and casting out demons, and I'm going to become a serious intercessor, warrior. I mean, you're going to go off to something serious. Now, it's just going to, things are going to come out of nowhere. You know, when I, I mean, I used to, I used to run like 10 miles, 10 miles every other day. I would run, I would run 10 miles, and I would lift weights every day, and I was, you know, I'd just 10 pack, and... I mean, I was in such super good shape, and I didn't have any kind of problems. I didn't have any, I mean, I had like a lot of attacks on things in my life, but on me physically, I didn't, I didn't absolutely not, nothing wrong at all. And as soon as I start getting delivered, I would wake up in the morning, and it felt like somebody beat my feet with sticks all night long. Even in, in the morning, or to try and get up and go to the bathroom, I, I would get up and I'd be like, oh, it would be such terrible pain. Like somebody, like they had held your feet and beat it with sticks for hours. And I'd be walking like, I'm like 30 years old. I'm walking like, and all these things like this, this is just one example. But all these things just started coming out of nowhere. As soon as I started, and the more serious I got about deliverance, and the more I started trying to really get delivered, the more worse it got. And it wasn't because new demons were coming like people new to deliverance think. It was things coming up to protect the house, to try and intimidate me. Now all of a sudden I had a shorter temper. Now I felt, I felt more angry. You know, when I was in the world, I felt like a lot more happy. Now I'm feeling more agitated, more stress, more pressure, get angry easier. I mean, just, you know, people don't like me now so much, whereas before everybody wanted to be my friend. You know, I mean, just everything started, every single thing started to change in my life. I mean, when I was out in the world, all the girls wanted to go out with me, and yeah, life was exciting, and as soon as I started doing deliverance, not every girl went like, ew. 
<laughs> and it was still the same me. But you see, this is, this is what the demons can turn on and off. Because they're controlling the things in the world and the people around you, you see? And you start getting all these weird attacks. And this is the thing in understanding spiritual warfare, why it's good we talk about this for the new people that are just getting started, that you don't listen to the voice going, see, I told you it doesn't work. See, it's only getting worse. And that's where they want to fall away, see? And they're thinking, oh, I'm in the wrong thing. This is normal response. Okay? And this is just telling us how, what kind of degree that we have. So look, only the people still stayed in the high places. They did not take down the high places. And Solomon loved God. Verse 3, Solomon loved God and he walked, he walked in the ways of God except, except he was going up to the high places to burn incense. To burn incense. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, if you understand the, the Old Testament, only a priest, only a priest can burn incense. A king cannot burn uh, incense. Uh, I think there was a king, I, I'm trying to remember his name, his name was Joram, and uh, he came in and tried to take over the priest's, op priest's office, and he got, ended up uh, getting leprosy. Uh, and uh, because, you know, there's different offices, remember, uh, Anyways, you, there's display, things that you don't do, and burning incense would be done by the, by the priest. Uh, incense represents prayer. You know, if you, go, if you go to the book of Revelations, it'll say, the prayers of the saints come up like sweet-smelling incense before the throne of God. You see? So, so he's doing these things thinking... See, first you have step number one, the Pharaoh's daughter. Then you have step number two... Uh, where he starts to slip a little bit, a little bit more by going up the high places. Then step number three, he's up there doing godly things in ungodly places. See, it just, it just starts out little where you don't really notice it, and then starts to grow a little, a little, a little, a little. You know, with sin, you start with one sin, you're thinking, oh my God, I'm probably going to get hit by a lightning bolt. Then you don't get hit by a lightning bolt, and then you, you go, well, okay, maybe one more. And then, it, and then after a while, it grows to the point where you're not even convicted by the Holy Spirit anymore. And that's where things really start to get, uh, start to get uh, out of control. Eve listened to, to Satan, and Adam listened to Eve. You see, step by step. First you go, you listen to the snake, and then the one who listened to the snake and ate now turns and gives it to another one. You see? And it starts a chain reaction of, these, uh, of these, these kinds of things. In 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, it says, in the latter times, many people will depart. They will be led away, tricked away from their faith by seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons. This is why we need to know. It says they'll fall away from Christ, even that are, that are in, the, in the church. In Matthew 15, verse 9, it says, people in the church, uh, in vain, they worship God. They worship God for nothing, ends up being for nothing, because they teach the doctrines and commandments of men, not the commandments of God. You see? So if you're going to, if you're going to a man-made church with man-made programs, it's as if you're not going to church. You're, in God's eyes, you're just going to like a, a Christian uh, Get together gathering, but but you're not really going into church, even though it says church, it says church on the fir, on the front door. First Kings eleven, four through eight. Is this interesting so far? First Kings eleven, four through eight. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wife's turned his heart away to other gods. And this is like the third time that we preach this message. Because this is a, you know, this is a very important uh, message that, that we need to, to, to learn here. See, first, look at verse 1. Solomon loved many demonic women. Strange women, that means involved with the demonic. They're, they're, they're non-Jews. Together, look... 
He, he loved many demonic women together with the Pharaoh's daughter. Do you see? It, because it makes it clear that the first step was going after the Pharaoh's daughter and bringing her back to the camp. Then that opened the door for the demons to come in and start suggesting, well, maybe one more. Well, maybe one more. Well, maybe another one, and God's not doing anything about it, so it must be okay. And eventually, in verse 3, he has 700 wives and 300 fornication girls. So he ends up, he has 1,000, 1,000 women, and they're all full of demons. And anyone that you have sex with, you become one flesh with. So can you imagine? Can you imagine how many connections to the demonic this guy has? And they worked on him, worked on him, worked on him. And it came to pass when he got older that then his heart was turned away from the demons by the demons which were in his wives. Do you understand? The wives are only being orchestrated by what the demons are telling them to do. You see? And then we, and then we start to see all these uh, demonic names, and we went over this the other night. Solomon went after Ashtoreth, national-level demon, the goddess of the Zidonians, Milcom, national level demon of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil right in front of God's face and started to backslide away from God. Then Solomon began to, began to build high places. Why is he building high places? Because he already had these spirits from going up and worshiping at the high places. Get it? Get it? What are these things? These things are the high places in his life. So look, we got the physical high places, which if you go up to the physical high places, you can just say the, dem the demonic things. If you go to the demonic things, then the demonic things get in you and they become the curses in your life, which are the high places in you. Got it? One is physical, that then turns into spiritual. I mean, if you, if you go and you look at pornography, that's physical. But by looking at pornography, you get demons of pornography enter into through your eyes, and now they're in you. You see? So there's a place of pornography that you went to that then builds a place of pornography in you. Sin. I'm not talking about pornography, I'm just talking about sin. So you can understand it. High place, high place. You could just say the high places is your generational curses and it's much easier to understand. A high place is simply where you go to do something that's demonic where you should not go. See, it's the forbidden, it's the forbidden fruit. Do you see? You see, you see, how, the, see how this thing, thing goes? Now, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, the Word of God says, If you defile, don't you know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit lives in you? And if you defile this temple, it brings the destroyer. So now, you go to the wrong place, then the wrong spirits from the wrong place get in you, then they start getting you to do more wrong which then brings a demon called the destroyer. And now the destroyer is chasing you, hunting you. Uh, it says in Deuteronomy 28, verse 45 through 48, uh, that these, these curses will chase you. They will pursue you and, and hunt you until you serve your enemy, which would be demon, Satan, until you serve your enemies in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, in wanting all things, extreme poverty and lack curses by the destroyer, until you be destroyed. Who destroys you? The destroyer. You see the chain reaction? See how it works? God says if you start to pollute this temple, it will bring the destroyer. Okay? You see you see where we're going with you see where we're going with this? This kind these kinds of ideas, things. Okay. First Kings eleven nine through twenty-eight. 
12. And the Lord was very angry with Solomon because he had, he had backslid away from God, even though God had come to him and visited him two times. And God commanded him and warned him, remember the warning? I'll bless you forever, you and your family, but if you start to backslide and go after wrong things. And this could be many things. It could be your Facebook. It could be a social app. It could be the wrong kind of person in your life. It could start to be drinking or smoking or whatever. This, these things can be idols in your life. Anything you put before God becomes an idol. The Lord was very angry because he had even and told him, you can be blessed, and if you don't do these things, you'll be cursed. Remember? And that's in verse 9. And he had commanded him, you will not do that if you want me in your life. However, Solomon would not listen. And so God said to him, because of this, all these promises will be taken away. Now you're going to lose all these promises that I wanted to give to you. Adam and Eve were told, you can, you can live here and everything be good, just don't touch that one thing over there. And they went over there and they did it. And they found that everything got taken away. And the curse came and now they were pushed away from God's presence. Do you see? It's the same principle and we can chase, we can chase this kind of principle all the way to the book of Revelations. Because when you get up to the end of the book of Revelations, like in Revelations 22, it says, uh, blessed are those who kept, who kept the commandments of God. They will be able to enter into heaven through the gates. But outside, the ones who cannot are the dogs, the occult people, the people who led a wrong lifestyle. They cannot get into heaven. You see, so it's the same principle all the way back to Adam and Eve. It's the same thing. You get out of the presence of God. You see? Make sense so far to you? You understanding it? Don't be deceived. Galatians 6, 7. Don't be deceived. Who is the deceiver? Satan. Don't be deceived by the deceiver. God will not be mocked. What you sow, you will reap. Revelations 12 says, Woe to the people of earth because the deceiver, the accuser, the dragon, the serpent, Satan, has been cast down and now he's around you the deceiver who goes to deceive the entire world satan goes to deceive the entire world whether you are a born again believer or whether you are a person of the world satan is going to come and try his best to deceive you he tried it with jesus he tried to deceive jesus didn't he well throw yourself off of you, off the church here and I'm sure the angels will be down there and catch you don't worry about it shall not tempt the Lord your God right okay 2nd Kings 14 13 through 14 2nd Kings 14 13 through 14 You there? Jehoash, king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of blah, 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 and came to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim onto the corner of the gate, 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and all the silver and all the vessels that were in the church, the house of God, and in the treasures of the king's house, and he took all the workers in the church and the people, and he took them away as slaves. Where did he just go? He went into the place that Solomon spent all those years building, where after he was done and finished, he brought in all the things needed for church service, and God says, this is so nice, I'm going to move in here. And then Solomon falls. They start to bring the demonic things. Little 
by little and changing the Word of God as it is today and, and until it just becomes the happy clappy thing and there's nothing that it looks like in the Bible whatsoever. Then what happens is the enemy comes and starts to break down the defenses that were there before. There used to be a hedge of protection around the church because the church was going with God, but now the hedge of protection is broken. Ecclesiastes 9 tells us, anyone puts a hole in the hedge of protection, a serpent will come in and bite you. It'll come in through the hedge, be a breach, known as breaches. And, um, and, the thing, and the thing that we see is that all the good things, it is good, like God said to Adam and Eve, it is good, little by little started to become not so good. Little by little it started to get more and more polluted until it becomes intolerable for God. You, uh, you know, you, you can be a person of God, let's say. We saw that in Romans 1. Uh, they used to know God, but they didn't retain God. Romans 1, 18 through 32. They used to know God, but little by little, considering themselves to, wa to be wise, they became fools until their foolish heart was darkened and their minds was corrupted and God gave them over to a reprobate mind. See, this is, this is the problem. You know, uh, Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And no, one, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And happy clappy people that get involved with backsliding, they'll use these kinds of scriptures. Once saved, always saved. These kinds of doctrines that they, they try and stand on to justify their sin. Because they don't get delivered and they don't want to get delivered. And so they have to justify what they're doing so they, because they couldn't deal with the idea of what I'm doing is going to take me to hell. And so they live, on, they live under, this, under this illusion. But, but after a while, you go too far. You just go too far. And then eventually, these things turn on you. They turn on you, and you start getting all these attacks and being overwhelmed. And, this is, and that's in the spirit, but this is in the physical right now. This is something physical that is happening by the spirit world controlling humans, which is what we talked about in our last meeting. The spirit world staring up, appointed time of visitation in part one. This is the appointed time of visit, visitation right here. And God, God has steered up enemies against the church and the people of God. And now the enemy comes, tears down the walls, and comes in and steals everything out of Solomon's house and steals his family away and steals everything out of the church and then burns the church down. How did that happen? Well, God allowed it to happen because they just pushed him so far that God went, okay, that's it. Uh, I've had enough. And God moves out of the church. In the book of Ezekiel, there's a whole process where God takes Ezekiel to the church just before he leaves. And he says to Ezekiel, there's holes in the church walls. See? Holes in the hedge of protection. These are parables. Look through, the hole, look through the hole in the wall of the church. What do you see? And he puts his head in and he looks in the church and he goes, I see all kinds of creeping beasts and slimy, filthy things and creeping, you know, like serpents and scorpions. And demonic. I see all this demonic stuff and this filthiness because they've gotten so far out of track. And God says to him, that's why, that's why I am leaving the church. God said. I'm leaving the presence. And then as he sat there and he watched, he saw the Spirit of God lift off the altar. Lift off the altar. And then it, then it says he came over, came, it comes over and he stands by the north gate. The north, north side of the altar is always the side of God. See? And, and he comes off and he says he looks and he sees the Spirit of God standing uh, over the door on the north side, north side of the temple. And he's amazed he, because God's moving towards the exit. And then he says, and then, and then he watches and he sees the Spirit of God 
go out the door and over the city and he looks he looks and the Spirit of God comes and lands on what would be uh, ancient Mount Moriah more than likely uh, which is where the Abraham altar was which is also where the temple uh, was built remember David went into the threshing floor of Onan to take to take it back and and where Jesus is going to set down see on Mount Mount of Olives right in that general area there and he sees the Spirit of God lift and God sits on the mountain he sits on the mountain the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God is looking looking around the city like this Remember, remember right before Jesus was crucified, it says he went up and he stood on the mountain and he looked over the city and was crying. And he said, how often I tried to bring you under my wing, like a mother chicken takes her little babies, but you said no. And because of this, your houses will be destroyed in desolation. You see how Jesus ties... This whole principle is going throughout the entire Bible, this kind of idea. And it says, and then I saw the Spirit of God rise up off the mountain and he was gone. Meanwhile, as it is today with most of the church, they're still continuing on. The Holy Spirit is left. There's no move of God going on. There's no, I'm not saying all churches, but for most part today, They've allowed the Holy Spirit to leave their presence by the spirit of religion. And they still have beautiful music and they still have beautiful lights and everything and the people still look beautiful, but the Holy Spirit is not there. And the most that they feel is maybe some presence of God during the worship, but it's hard to determine between the presence of God and an emotional experience. Because a, lot of, because a lot of people go come to church and they have a heavy emotional experience. They get super excited. And they believe that's the Holy Spirit. And then they go out and immediately they backslide and fall away. So it can't be the Holy Spirit. Because if the Holy Spirit moves on something, it's going to leave a lasting impression. So they can't commit. They can't come in contact with the Holy Spirit, but they think they did because they got excited. And they're going, you know, they're driving away from church going, man, what a great message that was today. Man, and the worship team was just really on key, and man, it was so good, wasn't it? Everybody going, yeah. That doesn't mean that's the Holy Spirit. That doesn't mean that was the Holy Spirit. How are you going to know if that was the Holy Spirit? Their life will begin to change. They'll become more committed, and they will start to get real deliverance, because the presence of God will start to deliver you. You know, many times we just worshiping and we start getting delivered or sometimes the Holy Spirit just moves on when we're talking about spiritual warfare kinds, kinds of things. And this is the real Holy Spirit. You, you can't get delivered by an emotional experience. Do you see? You see what I'm saying? So this is why you got to kind of pay attention to these kinds of things. So he came in and he stole everything that used to be good. And the point is this, that you, you, you can come to God and you can get the presence of God. You can even get the Holy Spirit. You know, King Saul, he got the Holy Spirit in 1 Samuel 10. Later on, the Holy Spirit left his life in 1 Samuel 16, 14. And then the demonic came in. Then everything started going bad, going wrong until he lost his, his kingdom place. He lost his crown. You see? And, um, and so God is, you know, God is saying this to us that, you know, you can be greatly called of God and you can have all these godly experiences and super exciting things and, and real things and people getting healed, people getting delivered. But, um, you know, Paul said, and I think it's in uh, 1, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, uh, Paul said, uh, I have to be very careful even about my own life and my own body. Unless after I preach to so many people, I myself am a castaway. Do you see? Remember the other night we looked at Ezekiel 3 about the watchmen? Uh, and it said if a, if, a, if a righteous person turns from their righteousness, their righteousness will be remembered no more. 
But if a backslider turns from his backsliding and comes back to God, his past can be forgiven. Do you see? So it just depends on, on where you're at. And it really doesn't have to do with Satan, who's trying to bring you down. And it doesn't really have to do with God, who's trying to lift you up. It has to do with what is your decision. Which way are you going to go? You have two offers. You know, this is what God said. And Moses told the people, choose this day the blessing and the curse. And we make, we make those... Uh, those kind of those kind of decisions, you see. Okay, Jeremiah fifty-two verse twenty-four. Is it still exciting to you? Yes. You sure? Yes. You're not feeling sleepy. Need a nap? No. You sure? Yes. Okay, Jeremiah fifty-two. Verse 24, Jeremiah 52, 24. Jeremiah 52, okay. 24. And the captain of the guard took Sariah the chief priest and Zephaniah the second priest and they removed the keepers of the door. They removed the keepers of the door. What did God say to a Cain? Be careful because Satan stands at the door. You see, so there are spiritual doors that you can open up by sin. If you're walking with God, then you have the protection of the Holy Spirit who is the door guard of your life. Even Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door of your life, knocking, and if you will open the door to me, I will come in and be with you. So you see, there are spiritual doors. Got it? Okay. And this should be guarded by the hedge of protection that God, that God gives us. Um, hopefully you're putting on the full armor of God every day. And uh, should be guarded by the protection of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. But, but when they start to get out of order, uh, and this is, this is the second attack, this is the second attack uh, that's, on, that's on the temple. Look at verse 12. In the fifth month, Blah, 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 blah. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the church and the city of God again, and he burned the house of God. Again. They attacked the house and the city of God over and over. They burned it all with fire. They burned down the king's house. They broke down the walls of protection round about. They robbed the church, and they removed the protection from the doors. You see? Do you see? Now look, that's in the physical, being done by spiritual. Steering up, God's steering up, that's what we talked about in verse 1, God's steering up the spirit realm to bring an attack of correction at the appointed time of visitation. Got it? Starting to see, put this together with the first teaching? Okay, now there's no protection on the doors. It would be like this. God puts a curse on us and the locks fall off the door in the middle of the night. And now you don't realize it that anyone can come right in through the door because it's no longer protected. You see? Uh, and, but, you know, that'd be physical. That'd be physical here being done by spiritual but now, what we're talking about with us, the doorways on our life, the entry points, we're talking about spirit. See, we're going back and forth in parables from the physical to the spiritual. You understand that, yes? Uh, okay, so now they can, they can come in and out. Now look at 1 Kings 7 and 2. I'm going to do another teaching on this maybe on, uh, maybe on Sunday. Uh, so I'm not going to go too deep in this, but here's a couple of scriptures here. 1 Kings 7, 
verse 2. 1 Kings 7, verse 2. Solomon built the, built the house of the forest of Lebanon. Do you know what that is? That's the armory. That's where the weapons are kept. It'd be like if you had a gun collection, if you had a military fort, they'd have a separate place where they keep the ammunition and all the guns. They'd have like a, a shack out there. Well, that's what this is. They, uh, he, built, he, built the, uh, he built the armory, the armory of God. Look at Isaiah 22, verse 3. Eight. You're getting a, a good workout on scripture, huh? You have strong fingers after tonight. Isaiah 22, verse 8. And he, and he discovered the covering of Judah, and you did look in the day to the armor of the house of the forest, the house of Lebanon. The house of Lebanon. And what and the very first place, again, I'm gonna talk about this on Sunday, so I'm not gonna go too deep into this. But the but the very first thing that happens when the enemy attacks you is they go to the armory. So look, the very first thing that, that if you if a demon came in here like right now, and let's just say the demon was just standing here right now, and uh, and Satan's over there. And, uh, and he said to Satan, well, we have some legal rights. I got legal rights to all these people because they did some wrong things. So what do you want me to go after first, boss? What do you think it would be? The armory. The very first thing that they would go after is to try and shut down your gifts and your faith. Because your real, your real armory is your faith. That's why they always come to work with doubt and unbelief and, oh, I'm not sure. They start convincing you you don't have what you have. They try and start convincing you you don't have the anointing that God, that God, that God gave you. You see? And they actually can get in, and a lot of people won't believe this because they go, well, how could you pollute the Holy Spirit? But, but it's not really polluting the Holy Spirit. You know, all the, all the gifts come by the Holy Spirit, but between you and the Holy Spirit, you can put a division between you and the Holy Spirit. And people might go, well, no, I don't think that. But, but for instance, in Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2, it says sin and iniquity can put a separation between you and your God. So you can actually have things that come and shut you down. And another proof that would show this to you is in 1 Samuel, uh, in 1 Samuel 10, we see Saul get the Holy Spirit. And he's prophesying by the mouth of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and he's being, he's being activated for war by the Holy Spirit and being a successful warrior by the, whole, by, by the Holy Spirit. But then, so, so he has the Holy Spirit doing these things. But then later he starts getting involved with sin. And now, when, like for instance, he goes to the witch of Endor. It says he cannot hear the voice of God. And he can't get a word from God. He's going to good prophets and they go, well, I don't hear nothing. You see? He's completely cut off from all of these things. And not only that, but the demon gets in there and starts polluting the gift where now he's prophesying demonically instead of by the Holy Spirit. You see, this, this, these things are in Scripture. They're in Scripture. Okay, you want to try something? Take a little, take a little, little couple minute break? Huh? What do you want to do? Go eat some chicken or, or do some deliverance? Oh, okay. That's the kind of break I like. Let's just give it a try. Holy, say, Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask forgiveness for any sin in our family that could have brought any separation or pollution into the armory, into my Holy Spirit gifts or 
weapons. I renounce it. I break the curses. And if anything like that is here, I command it to leave me now in the name of Jesus. All right, take a deep breath. See what God does. All the pollution come out in Jesus' name. All the separation, all pollution in the gifts, all the doubt and unbelief that brings pollution. Go! In Jesus' name. Everything God is naming. Everything God is naming. Out you go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Out you go. I command you go. I father, pray, Father, cleanse the gifts. Cleanse the gifts. Cleanse the gifts, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Do a real house cleansing, because if you cleanse the gifts, Father, we can be used greater for your glory. We ask you to do it for that reason. In Jesus' name. That's right. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. 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 In Jesus' name. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Let the fire of God come down and burn them out, Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Out! In Jesus' name. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. 100 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 
Huh? I mean, if you go out, I mean, what, what, what do you want to get? You want to go out and get a, get a brand new, bright, shiny uh, motorcycle or car, or you want to go get a, a beat up, filthy, dirty one? I mean, both of them can take you from point A to B, but which one would you rather go to point A to B in? Do you see? Rather have it all cleaned up, wouldn't you? And it's going to drive better too, isn't it? And it's going to attract a lot less police and trouble. Yes? Okay. <laughs> go, go over to Daniel 1, 1 and 2. Now the church has just been robbed. They just had their, and for us, we could say, man, I just, uh, some demons just got in me and now I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing from God. How about that? Like Saul had. Now I'm having a hard time hearing from God. God, I, I don't know what happened, God. Where's the presence of God? Just feels like the presence of God just is not even around anymore right now. See? A lot of people go through these things. And, and usually, you can look at the behavior of your life just before these events, before you start feeling the presence of God gone. And you know what you're going to find? Well, you know, when now I'm really honest, you know, I really haven't been reading my Bible that much. You know, I've really been missing a lot of prayer. Yeah, you know, I really haven't been going to church all that much. See, you start looking. Yeah, you know, I, I've been kind of messing around with this thing and I shouldn't have been. I, Satan got me off track. Man, I got to repent and get back on track. You see? Because God's, uh, the presence of God is not just going to leave you. You know, Hezekiah was a guy who could hear from God and then he, he invited the Babylonians to, over to his house and he starts going, oh, look at all these nice things I got. Look at all the money I got. Look at this and... and He's told them, man, you should not have been bragging and doing that. Now you're inviting trouble. And it says, and so God stepped away from his life for a season to see what was in his heart. And that's a season of testing. Sometimes I feel like God is just gone and everything's going wrong. God is there, but he's stepping back to see, are you going to keep going? Are you going to keep going through this test? Are you going to trust me? Or are you going to be like so many people and just backslide and give up and walk away? This is the kind of test, you, you know, the more you go with God, the harder these, the deeper these tests go. But, but you know, with each time that you pass these tests, you're going to move up to a higher level. But remember the rule, higher level, bigger devil. Next time you're going to have a little bigger test. Okay, but at least you got a benchmark of success in your past. Okay, now they've robbed the church. They've robbed the church. Let's say this. We'll say one of two things. Physically, they came and they robbed the church. Spiritually, they've come to you and captured your gifts. Polluted your gifts. Okay? Let's just say that's happened. All right. Now look at this. Daniel 1, 1 and 2. In the third year, the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to the city of God. And he attacked the city of God. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hand of the demon worshipers. He gave the people of God into the hand of the demon worshipers. And Nebuchadnezzar took away part of Part of the house of God and the things that were in the house of God, part. And he took it back to his false god's house. Back to Bell. Remember, we were talking about Merodach and Bell on the last teaching, the national level demons that are ruling Babylon. So, Bell and Merodach, the national demons in Babylon, just got prizes. They got gifts. Nebuchadnezzar came and he robbed the church of God and he came and he gave it to the church of Satan. So now they have, they have half of what is needed to serve God. 
So you could say this, well, I can still kind of hear God, but not the way I used to be able to hear God. Well, I can still feel the anointing uh, somewhat, but not the way I used to feel it. Well, I, you know, I can, I pray for people and they're getting partly healed, but not completely healed the way they used to. I can still cast out some demons, but it's a real struggle and a real fight. It's like I don't have so much anointing or authority. You see? And if, you start, and if you start to trace this kind of idea, well, how could that have happened? You just start backstepping, stepping back in your life honestly between you and God, and look, what have I fallen away from that used to bring me into such a good relationship with God? I can tell you from experience that, um, that a service where you didn't pray that day, for instance, if you, if you just didn't have time, you didn't read the Bible, or you didn't pray, or something like that, and then you try and go do a service, you're only going to have half the anointing that you would have had if you would have read the Bible and prayed. I can tell you that from experience. I mean, I've proven that myself over the years. It's clear. It's clear. That relationship is what builds the power. Char you know, like the little smiley say, low bat. <laughs> Got to charge your bat. See? Okay, so look. So they took half of what was needed and they carried it to the house of their false god back to demon land and they put all the treasures of God in the treasures of their demon temple. You see? Treasures into the demon temple. If you look at Joel 3, if you look at Joel 3, Still got you excited? Joel 3, 3 through 5. They have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a whore and sold a girl for a drink of wine that they might drink. They sell their daughters for alcohol. They give away their children so they can sleep with a whore. Do you see? Yay! And what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, all of you? What will you do with me? I will return your re recompense upon your own head for this, because you have taken, because you have taken my silver and you have taken my gold and you have carried it away to your temples, all my good things. And this also gets into what I was saying on Wednesday night about tithing. If, you, if you're not a tither and you think you're being smart, well, I work hard and I need this money and I don't make so much money. Well, you're not going to make any more money. You'll just stay where you are. And you'll think, well, at least I'm saving my money now. But, but, had, you, but had you trusted God, had you trusted God and really been a tither, because God's looking at you, that money belongs to God. It doesn't belong to you. That 10% belongs to God. And, you know, if you're on YouTube that right there and you don't agree with that, well, that's fine. You can change the channel. But, uh, but as for me, that's what I believe, and I think we adequately proved that. And if you want to go back through where I stand in my own life and understand, uh, you can go back in the spirit. Last Wednesday night, when we were dealing with the spirit of wickedness, and I explain all this, I'm not going to go through it all again. But, uh, but look what God says. You took my silver and you took my gold and you carried away to Satan's temple. And this is what you do, this is what you do with your tithe. You go, well, I need this money, and then you use it to try and save yourself from the world. You got this money and you go, well, I might have to buy some food. Well, I, I might have to buy some pharmacy. Well, I, I might have to... And you use your money to save yourself from what you think is trouble, the trouble that might come, or maybe there's some trouble there and you're being tested. What are you going to do with the money? Are you going to invest in the, are you going to invest in the kingdom of God and then God will give you more and he'll cover those bills? Or are you going to think that you're going to be smart and hold on to the money and rob God? Huh? Look, if, let's say I just... I, you know, my little motorcycle, my little motorcycle's over there. Now, that, that, that's the only thing I own in the world, is that little motorcycle over there. 
But let's say uh, you came over to me and you went, man, James, you know, this is, this is a really nice bike. I bet this ride's pretty good. Huh? And I go, yeah, you want to you wanna take it for a ride around the, around the block? And you go, well, yeah, I'd really like that. I go, well, okay, here's the key, but, uh, but be back here within 30 minutes. Now, I just trusted you with the keys to my bike. It's not your bike. Just because I hand you the key doesn't mean it's your bike. It's not your bike. It's my bike. And this is what God does with, with money. He, he gives that 10%. That 10% is there, and he puts it in your hand, and you think it's yours, but he's only putting it there to see if he can trust you. And then uh, I give you the key to the bike, and you go out there, and you go, wow, man, this bike is great. I love this bike. Man, and I need a bike. And I need a bike. I think I'm just going to keep this bike. What are you now? You're a robber and you're a thief. In Malachi 3, God says, you're cursed with a curse because you are a robber and a thief. And the people go, what? How am I a robber and thief? He goes, because you robbed me of tithes and offerings. And again, I'm not asking for money. You all know I'm not going to ask for a penny tonight. And I, I never have, but I, I don't, I'm not trying to build you up too so everybody dig deep. No. Look. If you think I'm trying to manipulate you or some kind of crazy thing like that, then uh, give your money to a ministry that does the full gospel. Somebody that's really doing the full gospel, and then, then you certainly can't think that I'm just trying to get it. I'm talking about giving to God, to the, to the work of God, not giving on a James, because I'm not even on a salary here. Do you see? These are theories. But if you're robbing God, don't think you're being smart. You're not. You're being, stu you're being absolutely stupid. And you can do what you like. That's up to you. But, but for me, I've proven this over and over and over in my own life. I, I started rising up from, from the nothing. You know, when I, first came, when I first came to Jesus, literally for eight years, I never put even five cents in my pocket. For eight years. Can you imagine, do you think it's possible in your mind right now, in your mind right now, if I said, could you live the next eight years and never touch money? Could you do it? Could you do it? Or you say no? Well, then you don't have enough faith. See, a lot of people go, oh, no, oh, no, because you can't imagine it, can you? Because you don't realize, you really don't realize the things that God is, is able to do. You know, for me, when God came and challenged me, I had several houses, I had a lot of cars, I had a very successful business, and God challenged me. He said, pack a little bag like this and walk out the front door. That's what he said to me. And already all these troubles were coming and I was calling out to God like, why am I being spiritually attacked and all this kind of stuff. And I was seeing demons and I was seeing angels and it was like this, everything getting stirred up. And I knew something had to be done. But I was so addicted. See, I was like the man that Jesus came to and he said, uh, he said, well, there's still one thing lacking. We talked about this the other night. Still one thing lacking. Sell what you have. Give to the poor. And pick up your cross and follow me. See, I was that guy. See, maybe you're not that guy, but I was that guy. I was completely addicted to my business, to the, all the money, to all the stuff. All the stuff. And, uh, but it was a trap for me. And God pointed out to me clearly, in order to get free, I had to remove the traps. And there was only one way to remove that. When I asked the Lord, he said, well, you're just, you know, it's just like you're too caught up and addicted. You're going to have to just make, cut it like that. And God gave me a challenge, pack a little bag like this, and let's go for a walk. That's what he said to me. Come on, let's go for a walk with God. You want to go for a walk with God? I went, I said, well, uh, well, that sounds pretty good. Uh, uh, where are we going? Because I'm thinking, well, this is a pretty small bag. This is like a night bag. Like a night bag, you know. He goes, uh, I'll show you when we get there. And I go, well, uh, well, when are we coming back? He said, uh, oh, never. <laughs> Same thing he said to Abraham. Abraham took the challenge. Come away from your family. Come away from the area. Come away and follow me. And I had no idea where we were going. But I'll tell you, God... 
God took me out. And I started running. He started sending people to me. It was the most incredible thing I, I ever experienced. Started sending people to me and out on the street. And I really didn't know that much about anything. And I started praying for people. And they started getting healed. And demons started to, to come out of them. And I found myself up where somebody offered me a little, uh, a small little cabin. Very simple, up in the mountains. And I went, up, I went up in this cabin in the mountains and I had no money because God had told me don't take no money. Remember what he says in Matthew 10. He says, don't take money. Don't take extra clothes. Don't take another jacket. See, just go. It was like that. And I, and I went up and I was staying in this little cabin. This is a long story and I'm not going to stray too far. But, but the thing that started happening to me was the same thing that started happening with, with Elijah. Literally, I would go out every, every, few, every few mornings or at least once a week. I would walk out of this little cabin in the middle of no place. And there would be grocery bags sitting there. Full. And when I would look in the bags, it would be all my favorite things. And nobody even knew that I was, the only one who knew I was up in this place was the people who owned that and they were way down in the city. And they weren't going up there. See, if you really can put it, you probably can't, but, and I couldn't at the time either. But the thing, but the thing that I learned through all of that is that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He really will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. But, but there are things that God is requiring. There are requirements of obedience and sacrifice in things in your life and yielding to the tests and building up your, up your faith. And it's Satan's job to convince you that money is everything. See, God, the Bible says that God owns a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. If God needs to give you something, he sells one of his cows. He's still got a, a billion more on all the hills. And the Bible says, the gold is mine and the silver is mine, saith the Lord. So God can take care of all, all of these kinds, kinds of things. And even Jesus said, take no thought for what you're going to eat or drink. Take no thought about this and that. Because it's only God who can change things. You see? Okay. I mean, you know, I, I, I have quite a story to tell, and it's a long one, but it's not going to be for tonight. But anyways, God says, look, you're going to be cursed and attacked because you took my silver and you took my gold and you gave it away to the demonic. You gave it away to the world. Do you see what happens, what the result is? You start stealing God's motorcycle. And for a lot of people, they bought, their very, they bought the very car that they have by not tithing and giving into the kingdom of God's work. So every Sunday, they drive to church in a stolen car. There's a challenging thought for you right there, isn't it? <laughs> Proverbs 10, verse 2 says this, The treasures of wickedness will profit you nothing. The treasures gained by wickedness will profit you nothing. Hmm. Pro, uh, Micah 6, 10 through 13 says, There are wicked treasures for your wicked house. But if you bring wicked treasures back into your house, it will bring poverty and sickness into your life. Poverty and sickness, money earned or kept, stolen, taken by robbing God or lying, cheating, demonic means will bring poverty and sickness. That's Micah 6, 10 through 13. Jesus said in Matthew 15, verse 19, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. And out of a good treasured heart, you'll bring forth good things. Out of an evil treasured heart, you'll bring forth, you'll bring forth evil. Do you see? You see? All right. Now, unlawful captives. We're just, we're, we're almost, we're almost there. 
Isaiah 61 verse 1 says, I send you to those who are held captive in spiritual prisons to speak unto those who sit in darkness to liberate them and say, come forth. So you can be held as, an un, un, is, as a lawful and or a unlawful captive, but either way you can still be in, you can still be in the prison. Do you see? Okay, Revelation 20 verse 7 talks about spiritual prisons. 1 Peter 3.19 says, you know, we're writing the scriptures, so a lot of this, you can look it up later in your Bible study. Okay, we don't have time to go through each scripture. We'll just, we'll just run out of time. In fact, speaking of time, I should change my battery. Hallelujah. So just uh, praise the Lord and speak in tongues for... Okay, that didn't take long, did it? Hallelujah. All right, so there are, there are spiritual, spiritual prisons, and demons can capture, can capture you. You can write down Revelations 2, verse 10. Isaiah 14, 17 talks about Satan who refuses to release his prisoners. His prisoners, he refuses to let them, let them go. You can have parts of your soul, parts of your soul, captured, for instance, in Psalms, Psalms 7, uh, Psalm 7, verse 2, Two, oh my God, on one, oh my Lord God, in thee I put my trust. Save me from my attackers and deliver me. Unless my soul like is torn up like a lion until there is no one to deliver me. While there is no one there to deliver me. You can be captured. Deliverance is the key. Do you see? Parts parts of your parts of your soul another area talks about soul imprisonment would be psalms 142 verse 7 psalms 142 verse 7 or isaiah 42 22 through 23 psalms 142 Verse 7. Bring my soul out of prison, Lord God, that I can come out and praise your name. Oh, you see? So you can have these prison experiences even though you're walking around. See, you can have curses that puts you in physical prisons, like in jail, uh, by wicked behavior in the world, or you can do wicked spiritual behavior that puts you in spiritual prisons. Do you see? Got it? Okay. You got to get out of these prison houses if you are an unlawful prisoner, right? Look at uh, Isaiah 49, 24 through 25. Isaiah 49, 24 and 25. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? See, there are lawful captives. You can commit sin and become a captive of sin, a captive of Satan. Do you see? And now what are you going to have to do? You have to get delivered. But you can't get delivered until you turn and repent and renounce it. 
Look at verse 25. But thus says the Lord God, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, because I will fight against those who fight against you, and I will even save your children. You see, a father who gets delivered can help his family get delivered also. And even though the demons are saying, no, I have you, and you're not getting free. You know, many times we start doing deliverance, the demons come up and start speaking, saying, he's mine, he's mine. I have rights. I've heard demons say that kind of stuff millions of times, speaking out of people when you start doing deliverance. And sometimes they're right, and sometimes they're lying. But either way, you're going to have to do deliverance. You can be a lawful prisoner if you're still in that sin. People who are still involved in sin can come in here and ask you to deliver them. And you're trying to cast the demon out, and the demon is fighting, 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 fighting. And you're getting tired, but the demon is hanging in there. And you're going, my God. God, I never saw a demon fight so hard like this. Why isn't this demon coming out? Well, I can guarantee you just about it each and every time it's because that person, that demon is still convinced that that person is their friend. That demon is convinced that he still has rights. And so you are, you as the deliverance person are going against God. That's the way the demon looks at it. He looks at you and he says, you are going against God's orders. I have a right and you have no right to do this to me. That's what demons will say. This is not fair. You don't have a right. Have you ever heard demons say that? Those kind of things? You don't have a right. I'm not coming out. Okay. I mean, they might always say I'm not coming out. But, but the, demon, the demon can be completely telling the truth. You know, if the person has a house full of pornography and he comes in here trying to get delivered, that demon's going to fight and fight and fight. He's not going to come. He don't want to come out. And, he, and it's almost even pointless because, because even if the demon does come out, he's going to come back in and you could actually do more damage because it comes back seven times worse, maybe. Not always. That's not always the rule, but it could. But it could come back. I remember I was doing deliverance one time with a pastor's son, and the pastor's, the pastor's son, it was a young, young kid, maybe around 11 or something like that. And every, everything he did, he walked around and destroyed everything. I mean, he would just break things, smash things. He was like a wild animal monster in the house. And the pastor didn't want to do deliverance. And so he handed him over. He, he asked me, would I, would I do deliverance with his son? Little, maybe it wasn't even 11 maybe. Anyways, around that, around that age, young kid. And, uh, and the kid came over rebelliously, and he, and he sat down on the couch, and, and uh, I said, in Jesus' name, you're going to come out. You know, like, because I knew there was a demon in there. And the demon came up, and he gave me his name. He says, I am Destructo. That's what his name was, Destructo. And it named his behavior. And I started telling Destructo, come out in Jesus' name. And that demon and that 10 or 11-year-old kid, whatever he was, he just looked at me like this. And he was going, no, I won't. No, I won't. No, I won't. And I mean, you know, I know a lot of, I know a lot of weapons and patroom, patroom, patroom. You know, I know some stuff stuff from all those years and I was throwing everything at him except the kitchen sink uh, and I just couldn't believe there was this this little kid this little kid I mean how can you have a demon that powerful in there and I, not coming out and I'm just like he's going I won't come out and I go in Jesus name you will, will come out no I won't yes you will and finally the voice changed and the strong man came up the, the, real, the real demon. And a man's voice spoke out of this little kid. A deep man's voice. And he said, Come on, James. Let's have a little talk. That's what the demon said to me. And I'm like, 
like this, and he goes, he leans over me like this. Look, you and I both know that you have anointing. That's what he said to me. We both know that you have anointing. And sooner or later, you're probably going to wear me down. That's what he said to me. But let's reason together, James. That's what he said to me. And he was talking like in a deep man's voice. He goes, I'll tell you the truth. If you cast me out, I'll be back by tonight. I said, no, you won't in Jesus' name. I'll bind you. You know, I'm doing my, my thing. And he goes, James, James, James. That's what he said to me. He goes, you and I both know that the mother is completely out of control. She's a full-out Jezebel. That's what, that's what the demon said to me. And he goes, and the father, he says he's a pastor, but he don't do deliverance. If he did, what am I doing here? <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said. And the demon said, the whole house is out of order. And I have rights. And you know I do. That's what he said to me. You know I do. And I, and I said, no, you're coming out and you're a liar. He said, ask God. That's what he said to me. Then just ask God. And then I heard the Lord speak to me, clear as the light of day. And the Lord said to me, he's right. He doesn't have to come out. And all you're doing, all you're going to do, James, is wear yourself down to finally get him out, but he will come back. And this was the teaching of Jesus. Go your way and sin no more, that a worse thing come back upon you. See, demons are liars, but he was completely telling the truth. And you might think, well, uh, no, uh, because, uh, because, the boy wasn't a Jezebel, and the boy isn't the father. But you see, the age of accountability for children is a boy at 13. That's the age of bar mitzvah. When he becomes accountable, so he was like 10 or 11, so he was still accountable as the covering of the, of the parents. And a girl, when she's 12, that's the age of accountability. You see? So, so in the spirit world, he was absolutely correct because he was operating under the covering of the mother and father. You see? And, uh, and I had to go back and talk to the parents. I had to go back and talk to the parents, and I, had to, I, I actually told them this story. I said, look, I'm not here to accuse you of anything, but you asked me to do a job, and you know what I do. I, that's what I do, and I... You know, you know. And uh, I said, I just have to be honest with you. You want to get him free, but first you guys got to get free. And at first they were offended, but I go, look, <laughs> it's just the way that it is. A lot of people want to take their kids to you and go, oh, little Johnny, he's so rebellious. And you go, well, where did the rebellion come from? Yeah. First let's get delivered big Johnny. You see? See how this goes? So, you know... You can be a prisoner, you can be a prisoner, but you're a lawful prisoner. But, but, by, but by coming to Jesus and renouncing your curses, renouncing your sin, asking forgiveness, and removing the wrong things. So you have to remove the wrong things. First you do your part, then God does his part. You don't wait for God to do his part before you do your part. You don't go, deliver me and I'll throw away the pornography. Set me free and I'll throw away the cigarettes. No, you throw away the cigarettes and then you seek deliverance. You take the first step before God. This is a, this is the things how God, how God, God reacts. Do you see? Look at Isaiah 24, verse 22. I just have a few more scriptures. And we can do, uh, you know, part three next time. I still got plenty of good stuff. Don't worry. I got a treasure chest. 
Isaiah 24, verse 22. You know, I look, I couldn't have given you these kinds of teachings a year ago. In fact, I would say this. I probably couldn't have even given you some of these deep teachings before the lockdown. Maybe I'm pushing it a little far with that, by saying that. But, you know, I would say just by even seeing how much we've gone deeper and deeper with the Lord, we took advantage of the lockdown, and we unlocked the treasure chests of God, you see? And we applied it, and we started, you know, we started doing meetings pretty much every night, and sometimes even twice a day. And during the day, we had time to study the Word and singing and praising God. And we all, every time that Satan tried to make a little trouble between <laughs> this one and that one or against James, we, uh, we <laughs> in the Spirit of the Lord, we all had a little talk and we reasoned together and then we dealt with it and we put it and we got it back in place, right? So we dealt with it properly. We never allowed the devil to have more than 30 minutes or, 40, or no more than an hour <laughs> of, of his little, I'm gonna divide and conquer. It just didn't, he couldn't hold it. He couldn't keep it, right? And this is the thing about deliverance. It keeps bringing you back in unity and it keeps the trouble out in a way. You know, you have to, you just have to understand the devil's always going to come back and try and give another whack at you. You know, remember it says, and then the devil left Jesus for a season before he tried to come back and make trouble again. See? All right. Now look, Isaiah 24, verse 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And they shall be shut up in a prison. And after many days, they will be visited. They will be visited. Yes? Uh -huh. Isaiah 42, 6 and 7. Isaiah 42, 6. And seven, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will hold your hand and I will keep you and give you for a covenant to the people, for a light to the Gentiles. I will send you forward and use you to open the blind eyes, to bring the prisoners from the prison and to those who sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and I will not share my glory with anyone else. What does God want to use you to do? Set the captives free and teach the people who are spiritually blind these kinds of things. And that's what we're trying to do even right now, the people surrounded by darkness. Look at Isaiah 49, verse 9 that you may say to the prisoners, go forth. Come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth. Come forth to the marvelous light. You see the scripture? There's another one of our songs, you see? That you may say to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness. Show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways and their pastors shall be in all high places. You'll take back the high places. For they will not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them. God will show them mercy and lead them in the way. Yes? Okay. Do you got it? Do you got it? Psalms 146, verse 7. Just a couple more scriptures here. Psalms 146. Do you want the rest of them? Or you want to go home early? Psalms, Psalms 146, verse 
God made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything that there is, and he keeps the truth forever, which executes judgment for the oppressed, which gives food to the hungry, and the Lord will loose the prisoners. The Lord will open the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them up that are bowed down. The Lord loves righteousness. The Lord preserves the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked, he will turn you upside down. Huh? Psalms 69, 33. Psalms 69, 33. For the Lord hears the poor, and he does not hate the prisoners. Yes? Ecclesiastes 4, verse 14 says, Come forth out of prison and reign. Come forth out of prisoner and become a leader. You remember Joseph? He was put down in the lowest prison. But because he had the anointing on his life and the favor of God and because he didn't give up, he didn't quit, he kept being honest and he kept trying to help people who were in the same position as him. He didn't blame God. Is a very big key. Didn't blame God, but even in his attacks, he still kept trying, kept trying to serve God. Remember Job's wife said, well, just blame God and curse him and quit. But Joseph didn't do that. And because of that, God put favor on his life. And eventually, he got out of prison. And when he got out of prison, he became the number one man in the whole land under the king. And then his whole family got blessed. You see, sometimes a prison experience that you think is the worst thing in the world can actually be the best thing that is about to happen to you in your life. You know, David, when he was being so terribly attacked, just 72 hours before he finally got the crown back, he was going through the worst time he had ever had in his life. Three days. Three days. Three days before he got the blessing and got the crown back, he was saying, this is the worst time I've ever had in my whole life. And this can be a sign. You know, when you really see, I'll tell you this, when you really see the biggest attacks, I could tell you this from my, from my life, I see, I see terrible, terrible attacks as a sign of something good is coming. Now, that sounds crazy to someone in the world. But, you know, I have to do my part. I have to do my part. You know, I told you, uh, I told you a week ago that a lot of people didn't understand, but I was being attacked, and one of the worst attacks that I had had in years was going on in my life, and I didn't tell people what was really going on. But that, but that it was something that I had been praying about for five years. For five years, and seeing God do nothing and it was a hardship to me it was costing money and it was it was a hardship over it it was almost like I was saying to God I'm like a slave to this situation and uh, and then and then as things were really going up to a head of it really gonna get bad now I'm more serious we started really praying and fasting, and I started fasting for an extended amount of time, and, um, and then came this thing, this offer, this chance, shh, came right up like this. And it seemed like, wow, maybe it's about to happen, maybe this thing's gonna, and you know, I think some of it is, you know, people heard me, they didn't know what I was really talking about, but I think a lot of people on YouTube even started joining, oh God, whatever it is with James, help him, or, you know, people started interceding for me, a lot of my friends were started interceding, I started seriously, you know, was in fasting, and, and then I started, I started staying up, I started staying up till like 2 o'clock in the morning. 
with this situation and praying and speaking in tongues and praying and doing warfare in my house. Then I would go to sleep and then God would wake me up and I'd get up at five o'clock in the morning after only having like three hours sleep. Get me up again and I'd get back up and I'd be going back out in the middle of the night and through the house and doing more warfare, more warfare, more warfare. And, and on the other side of this thing, Satan was raising up satanic agents, humans, that were, that were lying and trying to cheat and trying to attack and trying to block this, who actually were supposed to be helping me, but they were working against me because Satan got a hold of them. And it got, it got nasty, you know, serious. And it was trying to wear me down and wear me out and get me to quit. But you see, I know from experience, even though I hate going through that stuff, I know from experience uh, now is the make or break moment. Now I'm either going to go, well, I hope so, and do nothing about it, and it'll probably not happen. And it'll be destroyed. Or now when we get to this place of seriousness, I make the decision myself. Are you going to go through it? Are you going to you going to make yourself do it? Are you going to you going to go through and and pay the price of the dedication and getting closer and closer to God. You're going to get yourself in the cleft of the rock. You're going to get yourself completely in that shadow. And that can only happen by doing warfare and going deeper in the presence of God. You have to make the decision. And no decision is an answer. No, you know, no answer is an answer. No decision is an answer. If you don't go and you give it 100% at that time where you're finally reaching this place where God is going, okay, okay, okay. You know, in the Bible, it always comes down to the final battle. It comes down to it. And God says, look, I've given you victory. I'm going to put the enemy in your hands. Go forth and meet them. See? And you want to go, well, God said I'm going to get the victory, so I'll just sit around the house and wait. But... But in all these battles, God says, I give you the victory, but you have to go out and fight the enemy. If you don't go out and fight, you lose the battle, even though God said, I guarantee you a win. You have to go out and be involved. You have to go out and pay the price spiritually. And there's, there's just no way around it. Okay? And I got the breakthrough. I mean, I got the complete breakthrough at, at uh, 2 30 almost three o'clock in the morning I got I got the the breakthrough two nights ago I saw it everything went and it just broke I saw the walls I saw the walls fall down and I saw a vision of this great dark uh, spirit and he got broken and my prophets the people started started texting me all around the world started texting me saying, James, James, I just saw this vision of this, you know, I saw this and I saw that and I saw this and, and I think, I, I think it, it's really over. The enemy's really angry and really upset. Did you get the breakthrough, James? And it, it was yes. You see? But some of these things, some of these things can take a while. You might think, well, I mean, James knows all these deliverance things and all this stuff. How could it take five years? You know why it took five years? Because it did. Just because it did. Not because it was a curse. Not because I had a demon. Just because it was, you know, the further you go with God, the longer some of your trials can last. Whereas in the last five years, I got a million victories in other areas that were much more easier. But some of these trials in your life, you're going to have to really dig in to get the breakthrough. And if you give up, a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. If you give up, you have absolutely no chance of ever being able to get the victory. Let's finish with this scripture here. Psalms 102, 19... through 20. Psalms 102, 19 through 20. 
For God has looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven the Lord looked and he beheld. And he heard the groaning of the prisoner to loose those that are appointed to death. So you see, God knows what you're going through and God can hear your prayers. And if you will go with God, God has a plan. But you have to go with God. You cannot go with disappointment or frustration. You cannot go with Mr. Discouragement. You cannot go with uh, anger at God or you can't go with Mr. Distraction. You have to go completely with God. And at the same time, be seeking a lot of deliverance. And I believe over that five-year period, you know, I mean, I, you know, me and prayer partners, we go through deliverance all the time, every single week. We don't miss any, a week, you know. We, every week and sometimes every day, we just are still doing deliverance just to keep things out and away from the church and away from other things like that. You know, I don't look at it like, oh man, still more deliverance. I look at it as exciting because we can operate in the Spirit of God. And we can affect the things and help people and I can intercede on the people out there, you know, who are helping to support the church and involved with the ministry. I can be doing warfare, even if they don't know what I'm doing, warfare with them and standing with them and doing deliverance, breaking things around them, whether they know it or not. These are the kind of things, these are the kind of things that I do and what I like to do. Yes? Okay. We renounce some stuff super fast. Okay. Holy Father God, in the name of Jesus, I renounce every curse involved with any of this and not any spirit attached to any of that. You're not my friend and I want you to go. In Jesus' name. Every demonic spirit, every stronghold, I'm not a thumb sucker. I'm a remnant warrior. I renounce pri spiritual prisons, the masons, horoscopes, kidney failure, bad works, backsliding, worshiping false gods, mocking God, not working for God, false prisoner, not doing deliverance, not doing having spots, having spots. Oh. chasing uh, wrong people in lust. <clears throat> Demonic things in my family. Not cleaning God's temple. Life out of order listening to the serpent in the tree of my life. And I command him to go. Satan's traps, excuses, not thinking before doing, not taking down the high places, hidden curses, short temper, strange weird attacks, Lies of the enemy, seducing spirits, soul ties with wrong people, heart being turned away from God, pornographies, defiling God's temple, put, putting anything before God, being deceived, being a deceiver, reprobate mind, Conspiracies of, relig of religion, being overwhelmed by attacks, pollution of the spiritual gifts, being robbed, cheated, no commitment, no changes in my life, uh, Allowing separation between me, G me, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Operating in fear. 
doubt, unbelief, disappointment, spirit of death, being separated by the things of God, by sins and iniquities, allowing my, ar my spiritual weapons and armory to be attacked, blocked, taken away, can't hear God anymore, can't feel the presence of God, inviting evil into my life, taking the things of God and giving it to demons, uh, not supporting the works of God, robbing God, wickedness, investing in the world but not God, love of money, captive of sin, being cursed with the curses, all spirits of sickness and disease, all spiritual prisons, part of my soul captured, prey of the terrible, the destroyer, rebellion, house out of order, blind eyes, being in darkness, and the oppressor. If I have any of those things, I ask the Father, in the name of Jesus, to help me get free and healed right now, in Jesus' name. All right. I command these things you leave right now. In Jesus' name. I give you a praise, Father. I pray for a mighty moving of healing and deliverance right now. Lasting healing and deliverance, Father. In the name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll move and push it out from the inside right now. I command you, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out. Fire from God on you. In, come. Out you come. Out you come. Out you come, 100%, 100%, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out in Jesus' name. Alles muss raus in Jesu Namen. Auflösung mit der Generation. Alles muss raus in Jesu Namen. Come on out, come on out, come on out, come on out. Do three deep coughs. Try who stay, try who stay. Go! Raus, raus, raus in Jesu Namen. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. That's right. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. 100%. 100%. 100%. Any area you are unlawfully a prisoner. Be loosed. Be loosed. I command the chains come off of you. All the chains and the shackles in the prison that you've been held as an unlawful prisoner. Be loosed. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, break the chain, break the chain, break the chain. Go, go, go. In Jesus' name. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Go, go, go now, go now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Come out. Out you come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 100%. 100%, 100%, 100%, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, come out, come out, come out, come out, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 
name of Jesus Christ. In the name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, 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 come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, 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 come out. In Jesus' name. Come out, come out, come out. I command you come out. I command you come out. I command you come out. Come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You come out. You come out. You come out. You come out. I command you. I command you. 100%. Come out. Come out now. 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 I bind the strong man. I spoil your house. I spoil your house. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out now. That's right. Come out. Leave. 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 In Jesus' name. Leave. 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 In Jesus' name. Come out. 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 Judgment on you. Come out in Jesus' name. I command you go. I command you go. I command you go. I command you. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. 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 I command you in Jesus' name, family curse, come out. Family curse. All fruits of the generation. You schnell, you raus and Jesu namen. Come raus and Jesu namen. I command you come out. Oh, Father, I pray the anointing that breaks the yoke, Father. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing that breaks the yoke, Father God. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be healed of that disease. Be set free from that sickness. Be, have that curse come off of your life right now. In Jesus' name, I pray for the miracle breakthrough to come upon your life right now. I pray for the miracle breakthrough to come forward onto your life right now. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, I give you a praise. 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 100%. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%.
Come out. Come out. I command you in Jesus' name. You come out. You come out. That skin attacker. Skin attacker. Come out. 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 Come out in Jesus' name. 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 Come out in Jesus. In Jesus' name. Go. 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 The one that thinks it's so funny. The one that thinks it's so funny. Judgment on you. Go now. Go. Fire from God. Fire from God on you. Fire from God. Now leave her. Leave now. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her now. Leave her now. Leave her now. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100
Jesus, mighty name.